example 3.8. In this example, we have a long solid tube which is insulated in the outer surface and cooled in the inner surface. It has a uniform heat generation within the solid. The task that we have to complete are the following. The first one, we have to find out the temperature distribution within the solid. The second task is to find the boundary conditions. If we set the temperature in the outer surface to be constant, as well as having insulation. The third part is to calculate the heat removal rate. And the fourth is to find out the uh, coefficient of convection at the inner surface. We consider this problem to be one dimensional, steady, constant properties. The heat generation is uniform and constant within the solid. Let's start the analysis with the heat equation for cylindrical coordinate systems. Notice this is the simplification after we consider steady state, one dimensional, constant properties, and constant heat generation. The result for this equation is the following. It's going to be the temperature as a function of R. It's going to be given as negative Q R squared over 4K plus C1 natural log of R plus E2. This is the completion of the first task. This is the temperature distribution as a function of R. The second part of the problem is to determine the boundary conditions and the constants for the temperature distribution. The first boundary condition it says that the outer surface is insulated. We set it up as a TDR R, R equal to R2 equal to zero. This indicates that the surface is insulated. For this particular problem, it indicates that for a practical application, the temperature at the outside is said to be a maximum temperature. Therefore, we could say that simply T at R equal to R2 is equal to TS2, as given in the problem. To solve for the constants C1 and C2, we simply solve the boundary conditions. First, we take the derivative of T with respect to R, and we take the T dr, and that is going to give us C1 over R minus Q dot R divided by 2K. And this has to give us equal to zero to follow the boundary condition. We solve for C1, and we obtain that C1 is equal to Q dot R squared over 2K. If we follow the same process, we find that T R2, we substitute it in the main equation, becomes minus Q dot R2 squared divided by 4K plus C1, which we already know to be Q dot R squared 2k natural log of r2 plus c2 and we solve for c2. c2 in this equation is going to give us c2 is going to give us t s2 which is the temperature r r2 plus q dot r2 square divided by 4k minus q R2 squared 2k natural log of R2. So these are now the constant C2 and C1. If we substitute them into the original equation, then this is going to give us the evaluation of the temperature distribution as a function of R. After we substitute the values for C1 and C2 in the original equation for TR, this is the equation that we get in terms of R2, TS2, K, and Q dot. Please make sure to take the time to follow the process and obtain the same equation and the same boundary conditions. The next task is to calculate the heat removal per unit length in the tube. 
In order to solve for this task, it is important to understand the basics of this problem. Notice that the heat transfer goes from the outer surface into the inner surface. There is no heat being removed in the outer surface since it's insulated. So we could treat this problem in two different ways. We know that the amount of conduction that goes through the inner surface has to be the same amount that is being removed by the convection. However, at this moment, we, know, we do not know the convection coefficient, so that part cannot be done this particular way. However, we also know that the amount of heat generated inside of the tube has to be lost at the inner surface, and we know that that has to be equal to the amount of conduction that goes through that particular surface. So we could simply say that the amount of heat that is being generated is equal to the amount of energy that is being conducted on the inner surface. And that's how we're going to solve the problem. As I stated before, we could calculate the heat removal using the conduction or the total heat generation in the tube. If we do it by conduction, we use Fourier's law, and we could simply say that the heat removed per unit length is going to be equal to negative k, 2 pi r, notice that this is the parameter, uh, therefore it makes it per unit length, and then we simply take the derivative of t with respect to r, and we evaluate it at r equal r1. The alternative method is to use the heat generation, and we can simply set that as qr prime, and it's going to be negative pi q dot, and the area that it goes across, or 2 squared minus or 1 square. If you evaluate the temperature distribution, take the derivative and substitute R1, and you, you're going to find that these two are going to be equal to each other. The fourth task is to calculate the convection coefficient at the inner surface. In order to do that, we're going to do a balance of energies at that surface. So we know that the amount of conduction that takes place at R1 has to be equal to amount of convection that is being released at that particular point. The amount of conduction that we have, we could calculate it using the heat removal that we obtained in part 3, and we could write it in terms of the heat generated, and that's going to be equal to R2 squared minus R1 squared, and that is going to be equal to the convection that is, takes place which is going to be h2 pi r1 and we're going from t infinity to the surface 1. If we calculate the value of h, we're going to simply obtain that q is going to be r2 divided by 2 R1, Ts1, minus T infinity. Notice that the negative is removing the value of H by simply switching the order of this temperatures over here. Notice that we could evaluate the value of H by calculating the value of Tsi using the equation that we obtained in the first part, in the second part, and get that value and substitute it in the value of H. Please take the time to go back and do all the calculations, all the solutions, and be able to obtain the same results.